All right, so let's uh, go ahead and start. We can go to the next um, uh, slide here. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, I, I, I really, for that a little bit, just kind of want to walk them through kind of one of the, what we'll end up talking about are really in three, uh, three areas. I really want to go through the strategic goals and objectives. Um, I also want to kind of uh, walk you through some of the categories so you can at least have a framing for um, you know, where I'm kind of getting some of this uh, from. Uh, there's a lot of different strategies uh, out there. Um, so I think it's important that we're kind of all talking the same language um, uh, strategically uh, with respect to uh, one thing uh, or, or the other. Uh, so from a strategic goals and objectives perspective, uh, these are the three areas that I think are going to frame uh, where I'm kind of coming from uh, with respect to uh, some of the strategies here, um, and 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 for me, uh, this very much starts with risk mitigation. Uh, there's a direct correlation, if you will, between uh, 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 risk mitigation strategy, the need for mis risk mitigation strategies, and uh, risky environments. So naturally, as the environment becomes more risky, uh, you'll want to. Um, uh, incorporate as many different risk mitigation strategies as you as, as you kind of can. Um, I think there's a natural relationship there. Uh, so we definitely want to, I wanted to look at uh, what are some ways to sort of decrease a lot of those risks. And uh, certainly uh, with respect to systems, um, IT systems and, and your supply chain management system uh, in general, um, that will certainly uh, help support that particular effort. Um, uh, you know, I can't imagine trying to conduct business in this environment and not having adequate um, uh, tools to sort of do so. So from a, a limits exposure and kind of avoiding pitfalls, um, I think that that you'll really want to make sure you have a better sense of your overall um, uh, supply chain management um, uh, environment from a from a digital uh, perspective. Secondarily, or the next one I really wanted to uh, one goal that I really wanted to kind of touch was uh, on the inf on the increased control perspective. So as it relates to uh, increased uh, controls overall, uh, you know, owning more of your supply chain, I think, is important these days um, and trying to uh, get in front of your your supply chain as much as possible is, um, I think, a, a, a big deal. I think there's uh, a natural uh, sort of need for that when you're trying to create a solid uh, digital uh, kind of environment. So I think it not only decreases your overall risk um, or, or exposure to risk, but it can also drive down price. It can increase a lot of efficiencies. And uh, from an uh, efficiency uh, perspective, I understand You know, sometimes that may not be the case. It might not be your core competency um, or whatnot when you're, when, when you're trying to expand out or own more of your overall uh, supply chain. But it really kind of opens the door to being a little bit more proactive and uh, rather than reactive with respect to a lot of the, the decisions that have to be made as it pertains to your supply chain. And there's an opportunity uh, to make quicker decisions, uh, which is always um, a, a, a really good thing. Um, oftentimes uh, with uh, extended uh, supply chain, you have partners that sort of waffle and um, you know they don't want to necessarily share all the information that uh, you need when you sort of need it, um, but you can avoid a lot of that by, in many respects, becoming a partner with yourself. So um, uh, owning more uh, or, or increasing your overall control uh, with your supply chain is, um, uh, is, is, I think, an important goal um, or direction that, that you'll want to go when you're just kind of thinking of what strategies make sense uh, for me and, uh, and, and, and and my organization in general. Lastly, on the information side, um, I think that uh, uh, it's, 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 it's very, very important to, when I think of information, I'm really getting more so at access points to information. In general, it's very, very important that you, that, that you kind of have as much information as you possibly can. But in today's environment, I think you really have to challenge yourself and ask, 
um, where am I getting that information or where do I need to kind of see that information? It's sort of a classic question of, of, of more so do those who need to know know when they need to know it? And um, I, I think, um, uh, you know, from an uh, information uh, perspective, you really got to ask yourself about your mobile devices, about, uh, you know, your watches now, you know, are you sort of seeing critical information as it relates to your supply chain um, at those value points? Uh, in your day to day, uh, whether it's notifications that your systems are doing and the like. So um, um, the access to information uh, is a huge deal. The more information, the merrier. I think the more information you have, the um, smarter your decisions sort of gets, not just about the speed in which, but you know, having the breadth of information can make you a smarter decision maker. So I think that's a value point that makes sense, but it's also um, those access points uh, for not just you, um, but also uh, the other members of your team that sort of need to have access to that information when they do. I think an important point here that 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 you don't really want to miss is that there's a price to pay for misinforming customers. Uh, so as it relates to information for our business, as it relates to uh, information for our customers, I, I, I think that um, uh, it's, it's very important that we give um, that information over or they have ac um, access to that particular inform information so that you can have those satisfied customers and you can have those sort of repeat uh, customers and not necessarily settle for, um, you know, asking your customers to always understand. We get it. The environment's tough. Pandemic is going on. Please understand us through this. I mean, that that only works so long. I think that you kind of got to get to the next level and, and, and really get to the actions that you need to implement uh, in order to sort of mitigate against this um, environment as is. And oftentimes, to be frank, the, the action could simply just be communication and just having better communication with uh, uh, your customers. And I think they'll understand it more um, if you kind of have um, those channels in place to kind of um, to kind of build on. So um, with that, from a categorical or, or in terms of goals and objectives, we can go to the next slide. The the one thing that you know when we're talking about supply chain management uh, systems, there's a lot of different components. Um, uh, a, a lot of different components for you know supply chain. A lot of different components for either modules. Even when you're talking about the supply chain modules of overall larger um, ERP systems. I'm kind of outlining a few here just so you can kind of see kind of where my train of, of thought is. Even here, I think I'm missing a couple, right? So I don't even see packaging here, even though you can kind of link a couple of those. But the working thought here is that um, these particular components are kind of driving where I'm kind of getting some of these from a category perspective, where I'm kind of getting some of these, um, uh, uh, some of these different strategies. And the strategies that that I'm going to share are going to be in line with kind of these three buckets, these three areas, kind of on the business side, the um, software systems kind of side, and some advanced functionality that um, can or you can kind of put together um, for um, operating at an even higher level. You can kind of go to the next slide. And these particular strategies are going to cut across these particular areas. So um, we're really I'm really kind of locking in on um, supplier management, inventory management, shipping management, um, as well as kind of these edge, these edge parts of what could be or should be part of the supply chain management uh, systems when you start talking data integration and um, the analytical side. So these are the areas that I'm going to focus on the most. This is kind of the the framework that we're gonna gonna um, sort of have this discussion on, and I know that there are other areas that we can dive into a little deeper. We probably can dive into each one of these boxes by its by itself as a standalone. But again, I'm just gonna touch some high level uh, strategies here um, that uh, maybe will uh, jog your mind or or um, uh, might uh, make you kind of do a little bit more digging or research or ask a couple questions about uh, your systems and ways that you sort of can benefit. So um, with that, I guess we can kind of jump into some of these strategies. The first on the business front, um, I guess there's the the this left side here, we're really talking about blocking and tackling, right? We're talking about very basic stuff here 
from a business front. And then on the other side, I think we can get into um, some even stronger uh, uh, strategic points. And I kind of wanted to touch a couple of the business um, side because uh, especially in tough environments, and I know that this is a tough environment because I hear it every single day from um, a lot of the clients that, that, that I speak to um, uh, within, this, within the uh, manufacturing space or inventory management sort of space, everyone's complaining about supply chain. I'm even experiencing it myself on the uh, customer side. Uh, just, just a little point to story. I, I ordered some two, uh, two, two basic stories. I ordered a gift for my, um, for, for, for my two kids, uh, December 16th. And uh, that gift is still in transit. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my heavy balls. And <laughs> it would be great if I can get my heavy balls for, for my boys. And, and I'm still waiting for it. I'm challenging the environment. I even went to um, uh, a Foot Locker. Uh, for, this is maybe two weeks prior to Christmas. And um, I went in the Foot Locker in their house of hoops. And, um, you know, one of my sons uh, wanted some basketball shoes. I asked him for some um, you know, the basketball shoes. And they said, we won't get basketball shoes till January 15th. Um, this is, this is Foot Locker. I mean, I'm in the house of hoops. You know, <laughs> you know how do you have a house of hoops and, and no shoes? You know, that's just weird, you know, but that's the environment that uh, major retailers are in. Um, that's the environment that small uh, businesses are in. Uh, everyone is experiencing a ton of supply chain strategies. And so when you're in a dynamic that, um, uh, when you're in a, an environment where um, uh, where, where products are that hard to kind of come by, I think you have to think about everything. Um, and that includes not just your digital technology stuff, but also the business side, what can we do? And these are some, what can we do on the business side before we jump into some of the more technical ones? Um, um, extended lead times where possible. Um, I Sometimes you have to reframe it. Maybe before, you know, and we see this every day when we kind of deal with, um, uh, restaurants or, you know, they, 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 they tend to close earlier um, than they used to. Um, stores, are, stores are sort of adjusting to the fact or really haven't come out of pandemic mode with respect to hours of operations, with respect to staffs. And I think that's still a function of this, extending the, the lead times and kind of sharing it and operating at a new normal and saying we used to be 24 hours a day. Now we're only, um, you know, now we can only do eight to 10. Um, hours a day. And, and, and that's fine when it's properly communicated and uh, when it's properly adjusted. And so where possible in those moments, uh, you can extend those particular lead times. We deal with a lot of uh, custom um, uh, manufacturers uh, made to order products. Um, uh, but, you know, sometimes you might want to consider those made to stocks and kind of boosting up supply with with uh, made to stocks rather than uh, made to order because those made to orders um, can increase the risk uh, on the um, uh, on the supply chain side. So um, and I know a lot of people that's not an option. Like I said, we deal with a lot of clients that have um, um, made to order um, products and I'm just throwing out different ways to think and especially with respect to mitigating risk. Um, um, throwing out different strategies that you can kind of think about and kind of explore a little bit more about possibilities, um, qualifying suppliers and regularly checking on, on their uh, fiscal health. Um, you know, you don't want to be dependent on a supplier that, uh, you know, is kind of falling uh, or, or, or that's having some resource challenges. Um, certainly on our side, on the digital uh, with, with respect to implementing systems, uh, we have this issue too, and we try to qualify um, a lot of the system integrators that we work with to make sure that those particular system integrators have the resources to do what they say um, uh, uh, or what, what our clients sort of need them to do. And even then, uh, we're still running into issues with certain systems uh, and, uh, you know, certain partners with uh, resource constraints. So we know it's everywhere, um, but it's very, very important that you stay on top of your partners and ask those follow up questions, not necessarily because you're planning on canceling them or anything, but just so that you're aware um, at, uh, of any issues that could develop in your in your chain that uh, maybe you weren't necessarily um, um, who you wouldn't know otherwise. And. And kind of with that, these next two, uh, with respect to diversity, I think cut through some of that. Um, having a network uh, rather than or, incre or incorporating more of a network philosophy. A lot of the times you can deal or, or, or grow dependent on one particular supplier. And I think it's important 
uh, to kind of think about maybe I need an alternative, maybe I need three or four uh, different suppliers to do that very same thing uh, in order to uh, mitigate against the risk of, of potentially one supplier not necessarily working out or have limitations or not being able to do certain things. Uh, the same principle can be applied towards partnerships. Um, like I'm one of the, the pieces I was mentioning earlier, have, have being able to partner with yourself or owning your own supply chain uh, rather than um, be solely dependent upon the marketplace to provide you with whether it's raw materials or or um, or, or or anything else or the, or the materials that you need to sort of be to sort of build the products the way you need them to be built. Um, it's important to maybe think about having more than one partner um, on uh, the pieces that you need partnerships on. Um, so that, you know, you don't fall victim to um, uh, any delays or not being able to support your customers in the way that you like. And the last and probably my favorite, I do a lot of food work um, in, in Denver. I'm, I'm, I, I uh, love kind of supporting communities and, and ending kind of uh, food deserts. Um, and one of the big issues here on the supply chain side is the locale and uh, being local and going local. Uh, proximity here matters a lot. Uh, it's very, very important if you can kind of reduce uh, the chain as much as possible and where possible, if you can kind of go next door uh, to get uh, what you need to sort of build out products or just to to, uh, to increase sort of the supply to sort of do so, rather than relying upon uh, overseas markets or, um, you know, longer distances. Again, a lot of this stuff is, you know, it's it, everyone's different. Every organization is sort of different. Uh, but when you're thinking about uh, the marketplace and, and trying to incorporate successful strategies, you want to think about it all. And um, certainly, if you haven't thought about going local, um, you know, you could sort of consider it. OK, next slide. Now we can kind of talk a little bit more about some of the more digital oriented um, strategies that uh, that that relate more to supply chain uh, management systems uh, or applications in general. Uh, one of the the biggest things that I'm seeing with clients that I'm working with, and or, or the, the biggest thing that I'm hearing, one of the loudest uh, th uh, things that I'm hearing is visibility or lack of visibility uh, into systems. Uh, increasing data visibility throughout the system is a thing, and it sort of uh, 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 sort of needs to happen a lot of the times with uh, supply chain management systems. And integration here is a big deal. But a lot of the times with supply chain management systems, you have to you have to sort of ask yourself, where can I see things and where can I not? Like, where does my visibility stop? Right. And a lot of a, a lot of the times it may extend, you know, up until a certain point. Uh, and then you kind of your your vendor management pieces may be kick in um, a lot of the lead times that um, a vendor uh, may be experiencing. You may not necessarily be able to see. Um, and, and, and it's really a big question. And. For, for me anyway, of, or for, for an organization, I should say, it's really a question of how much do you need to see into your supply chain? And if you're not seeing enough into your supply chain, then um, really question whether or not, you know, or, or what are the ways in which you can increase visibility into those systems? A lot of that's going to lead uh, to the integration side, which we'll talk about when we kind of get to that point. But um, increasing your visibility throughout your system can go a long way towards uh, providing you with uh, more insight uh, across your supply chain and a better communication uh, with your end customers and um, uh, I think more thorough uh, information in general. The second point here is um, having access to real-time data. A lot of the times, um, and some of this cuts into integration uh, 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 too, but a lot of the times, um, your supply chain data may be built on delayed uh, uh, data points. And I think that nowadays it's very, very important that you kind of have more of a real time access um, access points where you can kind of understand the dynamics that are happening on every every day. Sometimes weather, for example, um, can um, can cloud uh, some of the, the, the lead times. And, you know, knowing that information or knowing it earlier may allow you to sort of make uh, uh, dynamic decisions rather than um, seeing it a day behind or seeing the impacts. So you may hear about it kind of uh, on the news and you may not necessarily know that 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 impacts you and then you become a more reactive you you sort of drop into a more reactive space rather than a proactive space uh, with real-time information you can um, uh, be a little bit more dynamic and quicker to your decision points and so 
it's it's something that you should consider as it as it relates to uh, ways to be a little bit more strategic with your with, with your uh, applications. Um, integrations here is a big thing. Uh, I I'm you know I've done a lot of integration uh, over the years, and I know that uh, integration is. I mean, it's, it's, it's not always the same, um, you know, integration, one thing, for example, with even real time data, um, that's a different kind of integration uh, than just having a data pipe that just pushes data from one application kind of to the other. So depending upon your uh, strategic goals or your needs um, as an organization, you may need a different kind of, of, of integration. Um, in general, I would say that having tighter integrations uh is, is 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 very very important particularly as it relates to supply chain management because um you, re, you no matter how you slice it you're probably dealing with a set of data that's disconnected at some point right like once you get to the to the vendor you, your your suppliers kind of are operating on a different uh, data system than you are um you have portals uh, or you may have portals if you have if you don't have portals and maybe you can consider portals but even with portals you still sort of have a blind spot and so the more integration you can have um, across your supply chain at, at the point of raw materials all the way through um, I think the, the 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 better you are the, the the more opportunities you have to increase visibility and to benefit from even some of the strategic basic strategic points that we're sort of outlining here so um, where you can have tighter integrations between your applications uh, you should do so uh, you should incorporate um, those particular points and I think in the next we'll talk a little bit about even some ways that 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 you can do that but um uh, for those that that really want to uh, but yes no uh, i'm a big fan of, of of system integrate or integrating between applications and even now i think it's a little bit easier than it used to so um i think that that's a strategic point that matters and lastly uh, reviewing parameters a lot of the components of supply chain uh, systems are parameter based if you think of something like for example safety stock uh, replenishment of your safety stocks. I mean, are there, there are usually, well, I, you know, some companies will have policies as relates to these things. And some people, some companies will have set these policies or these parameters and just left them. Yeah. You know, just, you know, we, when was the last time you reviewed your supply chain parameters uh, for your, for your system? Uh, I mean, the environment's changing. It's, it's dynamic. It's, it's, it's become a lot more difficult. And I think it's fair to ask that question. When's the last time we reviewed? Um, on that policy, if you're replenishing at, you know, whether it's 25 units and you've been doing that for the last, I don't know, you know, five years, you know, maybe we should take that next next step and ask that question. Is is that enough? Is that, you know, can we can we take another pause and and review? Does the 25 make sense for us anymore? Uh, do we need to increase that? Um, uh, our state safety stock, do we need to turn on auto? replenishment, right, rather than a notification of some should, should the system just automatically make those particular requests or not um, when, when when you kind of hit certain parameters. I think those are all the kind of review points that um, uh, that make sense. And it's not specific to safety stock. I'm just kind of giving it as an example. Um, but in general, I think that uh, uh, that policy um, of, of kind of what parameters do we have in our current system, right, to affect a more active supply chain? Um, uh, what, what do we have? Are we using them? And to what degree are we using them? And should that be reviewed? I think that's a natural um, question that uh, may uh, build a lot of use in your current systems um, as, as is. So um, I think, though, a larger point, and I wanted to note it here, um, um, you know, as it relates to um, uh, uh, systems is that supply chain applications can do a lot more than just store data um, and set parameters. And so um, you kind of want to want to make sure you you you, um, you you review some of those particular points. Lastly, and this will kind of be the last thing that we kind of go through before we kind of get into a lot of these uh, uh, questions and ans answers, if you have them. Um, uh, it, what kind of advanced functionalities are kind of out there from a supply chain perspective. And uh, for me, I think that when you're talking about integrations, I think there's some basic points to sort of do it. I think at, at an advanced level though, cloud computing jumps out at me and, um, and how you can integrate um, the cloud. Um, uh, the, the, the cloud can kind of serve as a bridge between a lot of these 
um, uh, data sets that are disconnected. And uh, I know a lot of companies deal with them. It's not, it's not always, although everyone wants to operate on the same um, uh, platform, that's not always possible. And a lot of the times, as particularly on the supply chain, you sort of have to deal with the fact that um, you have these data sets that are disconnected. One way to sort of do that, uh, connect them in ways that, um, you know, current functionality doesn't allow is with the cloud. Uh, so definitely encourage to, uh, you know, review what you can do with the cloud uh, with respect to integrating data. And, um, uh, and, and so that would be one of the, the first points that I would have um, as it relates to advanced kind of integration functions that, that you can sort of incorporate within your current models. And the second would be to, to really look at RFID. Now, RFID isn't necessarily new. That's, it's, it's, it's old. It's a lot better than used to. It's not quite as, you know, it's, it kind of was a little costly and a little clunky when it came out. It's always been um, uh, interesting to me from a tracking perspective. Uh, and uh, when you think of the Internet of Things or being able to sort of access data um, or, or having these kind of product sets or individual products sort of connected to the internet um, so that you can kind of receive data from it. RFID for me jumps out. And I think that uh, if you have it necessary, you're looking for some advanced features and ways to kind of make your current supply chain um, um, you know, more dynamic and to, to get more access to more information across the supply chain, like uh, when it's in travel, for example. Um, to and from, um, you know, and, and I think RFID for me jumps out as a potential solution for some of that, particularly if you need to monitor things uh, more, more details like spoilage, for example, or uh, if you're trying to, uh, to, to, to monitor temperature or uh, environment in some way, uh, there's kind of ways to kind of make that um, potential uh, possible with RFID. And I know um, everyone doesn't necessarily uh, you know, think of that, and I know a lot of ERP systems in general um, don't necessarily um, uh, incorporate RFID uh, components, um, but, you know, that's potentially where the cloud can come in, and a lot of that information can kind of be received and transmitted that way uh, so that you can have access or see parts of that visibility. Um, or, uh, you can have visibility into to some of that data kind of earlier uh, than you're currently uh, receiving that in your in, in your current systems. Another point here, kind of, I guess one of the more interesting points is incorporating predictive modeling into your supply chain. Um, there's a lot of a lot of uh, advanced sort of uh, features now um, that can be uh, included into you know basic calculations. I guess the the first level is is having rules and having sort of these sort of you know basic calculations that you kind of put in place. But algorithms allow you to um, to go a step further. I mean, you can do things like determine what's the shortest path uh, from point from a uh, particular points, um, recommendations as it relates to um, suppliers. I mean, there's ways to build in a lot of uh, information to sort of make uh, your your uh, data set a little bit more informative, smarter and to start to share more with you as it relates to uh, information that you really need to know. And um, you can do this at a more, I don't call it manual, but you can do it at a, a little more manual level with respect to rules, with respect to um, calculations and algorithms and that sort of thing that you sort of implore in the system. Or you can do that through machines. I think machine learning is a part of this discussion too. Um, it's, and I think a lot of times when people think about artificial intelligence, they think about robots and, you know, these kind of these weird dogs that kind of are walking around as remote control cars and that sort of thing. Like, like uh, I think that that is a part of it, but so is machine learning and machine learning is a part of software um, at a point where machines can can learn certain things. If you sort of tell them to look out for all the data that they already have. Um, and, and, and provide them with these kind of basic algorithms to, to sort of move through, um, then you can turn your uh, current systems, your supply chain systems, or really any other system into uh, a vehicle to kind of share information that um, uh, is coming up, more alerts, notifications, and things that maybe you didn't see before or you didn't realize were impacted by, by uh, some of the current events. Um, but they can pick that stuff up uh, earlier than you and kind of share some of that back with you. So 
Um, it's a it's a little bit. I mean, it's not really baked into a lot of the current uh, supply chain management systems. But if you're really trying to get to next level with some things, and and you're really looking for some, what are some advanced functions that are out there? Um, you can model that, those environments, build out those environments, and uh, just feed the data into into uh, these kind of models that allow you to um, uh, get the kind of information that you're looking to uh, to, to sort of receive. So. Thank you.